if you are a graduate student and you want funding, notoriety, or just a job after you graduate, then you need to publish. But for a lot of people, publishing can feel almost impossible. So today we are discussing why is academic publishing just so hard and a few tips to make it a little bit more accessible to you while in grad school. Now the first reason that getting published in grad school is just so hard is that you're new. As a graduate student, especially in your earlier parts of your experience or your graduate career, you don't have a lot of academic experience. Even if you have a master's, the type of work that you do in your PhD looks a little bit different. And so because of that, you may not feel confident. You may not have enough data or experiences just generally to write a good and original research paper. However, that doesn't mean you just can't publish. In fact, there are a few things that graduate students do, even when they are new, to get used to the publishing process. And one of the first ways that I got published is to do a book review. Now, generally, if you're a part of academic organizations, or if you're just listening to a lot of listservs or asking around, you most likely will come across call for papers or just journals looking for people to do book reviews. And what's wonderful about book reviews, it doesn't really matter if you're new or old. As long as you have the ability to read a book, you can do a book review. Now I can do an entire video on what's important to include in a book review, so if that interests you, please leave a comment down below. But what the most important thing to get out of this is, you don't just have to publish articles to publish. Now yes, of course, generally it is more positive or seen more positive to have a peer reviewed article that is original research, however, Getting published definitely is important, no matter what you're publishing, as long as it is in reputable sources. So book reviews or exhibition reviews or other type of academic writing, like adding to an encyclopedia or responding to chapters or resource guides are a great way to just get your feet wet and get you used to the publishing process. This also will help build your CV with publishing experience, even if they're not all peer review articles. It will still look good on your CV. The second reason that getting published in grad school is just so hard is that reviewers can be a lot. Now, of course, it's almost never personal, Though that doesn't mean it's never, never personal, but generally if you're a graduate student and you are new to publication, it's most likely not going to be personal. However, reviewers can be picky, not helpful, or just random. And all of those things kind of impact what type of feedback you receive, if you're likely to be accepted or rejected, or if somebody says something that's not so generative or kind. And so what can happen when you're going to submit your publication and you're getting feedback from reviewers is that sometimes they may see things that are kind of mean and hurtful, which can be discouraging or make you feel like your article is not good enough. You may just get a lot of review comments back in general, even if they're not negative or even if they're generative, they can still feel overwhelming and you might feel as if the article is still not good enough because you have to make all of these changes or they just might not be helpful. You may completely disagree with everything that they say and you think that they're just being too nitpicky. All of these things are completely possible, but it is not a make or break situation. Every journal is going to have its own culture and expectations. And so it's important to know if you get rejected from one journal, that doesn't mean that you have to keep submitting or trying to work with them. Instead, you can look for journals that are within your discipline that are still respectable that may appreciate your writing style or your research. Also, another strategy to help you be prepared for reviewers is to make sure before you ever submit your article or your future publication, that you have a lot of faculty looking over your work. In the preliminary stages, of course, you wanna have editors, you wanna have your peers read over it, but the next step, right before you review, you want to ask professors, do you think this is publishable? Do you have feedback? What would you change if this was your article? And by getting that kind of initial review from people that you know or faculty at your department or in your university more broadly, you can have a good idea of what may be some future comments that you can see or will experience through the review process and you'll be able to fix those errors or address those concerns 
head on before you get to the submission. This will not only save you time and energy, but also possibly help you with some of your preparation of understanding what publications are looking for so you can get more publications out maybe in the future. The next reason that publications are just so hard for graduate students is timing. A lot of publication process isn't really transparent and every journal is going to have its own timeline. But there's one thing that I can almost guarantee it most likely is going to take a while. The fastest that I've ever had anything published was a book review and it took me 15 weeks. And so that is kind of on the shorter end of things. Now I will have a video coming out very, very soon all about the publication process. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell. But what's important to know is that generally publications, journals, the review process, that whole shindig can take anywhere from 10 to two years. And so as a graduate student, if you wait too long, it may not get published until after you graduate. Or if you start it too early, it may get published before you actually do all the work that is good for you. And it's a real precarious time for graduate students to figure out when is the best time to submit a publication because you don't wanna be so new that the publication that you submit you're not proud of five years later, but you also don't wanna wait until you feel well polished and not get published by the time you're trying to apply to jobs. So there's a balancing act and there is a sweet middle space that many people approach right after their exams, but it's not an exact science. However, if you are somebody who is thinking about working in academia, being a professor and you need a peer reviewed article, one way that you can try to be prepared to have articles that are ready for publication around your late second, early third year is by taking classes that are directly related to the research that you care about. This way you are able to develop final papers that you can eventually edit and mold into something more mature after your exams without having to do a lot of the front work. Now also, depending on how your exam process works, you may be able to take your exam questions or your exam responses and edit them and revise them to be a good quality article. So by using things that you are already writing throughout your grad program and editing them as much as you can, as soon as you feel confident or comfortable to submit that writing, that is a great way to kind of try to get ahead of the timing of publication while you are in grad school. And that is direct connected to the next reason why it's so hard to publish as a graduate student and that is there's not a lot of support or not a lot of time but in a different way writing an article is not a quick process in addition to the whole review experience the writing part is the longest part because you're trying to do good work and even if you are trying to just write a book review for some of us reading an entire book can take time Thinking about what is the important parts of the book and how to bring that all together can also take weeks. Not to mention, writing your article or your book review or your exhibition review is not your only responsibility. As graduate students, we are often teaching, working, doing our own research, taking classes, taking care of our own personal needs, and all of those responsibilities really add up. Some people get grants to write entire articles, but as graduate students, we have to do this balancing act to figure out when will we have time or the resources to carve out space to sit down and write an article and to make sure that it's getting edited, reviewed, not to mention doing the research to find where to submit it, how that process works, and reformatting it if it's necessary. There's just a lot of details and little steps in between the publication process. As a result, it's really easy to feel bogged down as a PhD or graduate student trying to get published. You may feel like all of your time is going to your assignments, or all of your time is going to work, or what you're writing isn't good quality because your brain is tired or you're burnt out. And those are all reasonable things. Now, just like not having enough time throughout your PhD or grad career, taking classes that are connected to your research can also help you kind of feed two birds with one loaf of bread. In this regard, you are also focusing a lot of energy in the same space to make it do a lot more work. So not only would it be a term paper, but it would also be in publication. Not only will you need to edit it, but that edit can also come from the feedback that you're getting once you get the grade or once you get review. And so because of that process, you may be able to 
churn out at least one good article if you're being very strategic about classes. Another useful way to carve out time in your academic career is to take an independent study with a faculty. In an independent study, you can take that time that you would be taking in another class to really focus on whatever article or research that you want to do while asking that advisor or that supervisor of that independent study to give you good feedback and to walk you through that process. By doubling up and making things work for you, you can create space to have a little more time to write your articles. And the fifth reason why it's hard to publish is you just may not know how to start. I remember my first year asking, how do I get published? Can I publish this? How do I publish this? And people were really just flippant, like you just submit it, you just submit it. But nobody really walked me through the process, what the expectations are, or what is considered a good publication. And so it was really difficult for me to feel confident in submitting something or preparing something to be submitted because I just didn't feel like I understood what the process looks like. Now generally, like I said, the process is a very long process but it's not necessarily anything special. If you write a really good paper, if you take an independent study and you at least have one to maybe three faculty look over your document, if they think it's fine, I think it's fine to submit. There's really no consequences to submitting your paper except you may get rejected. But also on top of that, you may not. And even if you are rejected, then you'll be able to get your first round of feedback and guidance into how to make your paper better. So while you may not know where to start, it is important to know that don't slow yourself down just because you may not think your research is good enough or you're prepared. Now, like I said, I plan on having a video coming out very soon about the entire publication process. And so if it is out, you can watch that here. But if not, this next video is something that will help you with your writing to help you get one step closer to writing a good quality publication. If you found at least two things useful, please hit the thumbs up. It helps YouTube share this video with others who may need it. As always, your support helps a small YouTuber like me continue to grow. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.